Hey guys, welcome. Yeah, so uh, in example zero, um, we derived the arc length formula that we're gonna use in this example and in the other examples. Um, and by the way, in example two, we deal with a function of y instead of a function of x. So that'll be interesting, check that out. And example three is just a very interesting example because the function is defined as the integral of stuff. So like, yeah, uh, check them out. Anyway, um, yeah, in addition to examples one through three, as I said, we have example zero where we derive this formula, so you should check that out. It's a really cool video. Um, yeah, that's that. And otherwise, let's get started. So the um, formula we derived in example zero said that the arc length L um, from x equals a to x equals b is the integral from a to b of the square root of um, the square root of one plus f prime of x squared dx. And all we have to do in this example is just execute this integral and that's it. Like, so we're not doing anything fancy here. We're just applying this formula. Okay, cool. So an application of this formula here uh, will have us uh, know that we have to find f prime because that's f prime right there. So let's find f prime. So for the given f, f prime of x will have to equal um, 1 over uh, cosine of x times by chain rule negative sine x, right? So that is f prime of x will equal um, negative sine x divided by cosine x. And that we know means that f prime of x is equal to tan x, all right? Okay, or negative tan x, sorry, forgot about the negative sign. Okay, so negative tan x, but it will turn out that it doesn't matter. That's probably why I forgot about it. Anyway, anyway, um, so L then will equal here, A and B here are um, zero and pi over four. So zero to pi over four, and then it's square root of, square root of what? Square root of, um, and then it is square root of um, 1 plus f prime of x, I just said, is negative 10x. So negative 10x squared dx. But that's cumbersomely written. We could just write um, 10 squared x, right? As I said, we didn't need the negative. Um, and then dx, there we are. And uh, we remember from our trig identities that uh, 1 plus tan squared x is just secant squared x. So um, this is going to say 0 to pi over 4 of the square root of, and then it would be secant squared x dx. But the square root of secant squared x is just secant x. So uh, this is secant x dx. Now the antiderivative of secant x is um, ln of secant x plus tan x and plus c if it's um, an indefinite integral, but here we have a definite integral. So we're saying that L will have to be ln of, um, let me start again, I don't like that, ln of, that's better, sec x uh, plus tan x um, and this is the antiderivative of secant x, so we want to evaluate this at um, 0 and pi over 4. Now, there are a couple of ways to figure out the antiderivative of secant x, and I've done those videos, so I'll link those videos below this. But yeah, now all we have to do is evaluate this integral, and if you evaluate it uh, correctly and carefully, you should find that L is equal to ln of uh, 1 plus root 2. Yeah? Okay, cool. And that's fairly straightforward. It's just plugging in pi over 4 here and here, and then finding that value, which will have you say ln of 1 plus root 2 after you reduce it, and then plugging in 0, uh, and you'll find ln of 1, which is 0, so nothing else. So this is it. Yeah? Cool. All right. Uh, keep watching. There will be a couple more examples, as I said.